Hello and welcome everyone to our channel. In today's episode, we delve into a topic that is vital to any bathroom renovation, the use of foam core backer boards. These materials are growing in popularity for their ease of use, but there's an important conversation to be had about the role and the safety of our bathrooms. We're here to shed the light on the hidden dangers of foam core backer board and to discuss one critical step wood blocking that is essential for ensuring a secure installation of grab bars, a detail often missed in the renovation process. Although I'm not a certified expert in bathroom renovations, my journey has led me to understand the significance of planning for safety. I encourage a lively exchange of ideas and experiences in the comment sections below. Your input enriches our community's knowledge and can help others in their renovation projects. So let's get going. So how did we get here? Over the last 18 to 24 months, my efforts have been channeled into critically examining the effectiveness of grab bars in enhancing home safety. We've systematically assessed a spectrum of grab bar systems. This has led us to a comprehensive analysis on how various substrates, including drywall and different backer boards like cement and foam core, respond under stress. The results we've uncovered, particularly with foam core boards, have been enlightening and have implications for our continuous study. As we convene today, we're eager to delve into these findings and discuss a path forward. To ensure that our exploration into the performance of grab bars and wall substrates was as thorough and consistent as possible, we based our testing on the established standards, specifically the ASTAM F446-19, and you can just Google that and it's going to take you to the ASTAM standard. While I'm not operating as a certified laboratory, my approach has been closely aligned with these recognized procedures to test the endurance and strength of various grab bar installations. This includes evaluating how different grab bars, anchoring systems, tiles, wood blocking, adhesive, suction cup grab bars, backer boards, withstand forces that simulate real-world use. So what our system utilizes is a scissor jack that we're able to pull the force down and connected to this, we have an Amata force gauge, which has the, compa which has the capacity of 1,100 pounds of either push or pull force. And this setup allows us numerous test configurations. Once the grab bar is in place, we put a 50 pound load on it and we hold it for three minutes and then we increment in 50 pounds until we get to 250 pounds and we hold it there for five minutes. We have three camera angles that we're recording from, one on the top, which gives us a downward view, one in the front, one in the back. So to begin our testing, the first thing I did is I went to my local big box home improvement retailer and we bought the first foam core backer board we can find. And that just so happened to be the Go board. And we installed the Go board to the manufacturer specifications. I have to admit, I love foam core backer boards. Uh, and I have used GoBoard, I have used Weedy, and I have used Schluter. So I do have experience with this stuff, and um, I, I have to say I do love it, but we just have to understand what its limitations are. So the next thing we did is we prepared the wall with 12x12 12 12 and 2x2 two two tiles. And then what we did is we installed the Amazon Basics 18-inch grab bar with the Wingett's um, anchoring system, again, widely used in grab bar installations. And what we did then is we started to do a load test, as I said, increasing the weight every 50 pounds. And we have another video that we talk about the Wingett system, so you can actually see how they're installed. On the 12 by 12 tile with the Wingett anchors, at 230 pounds, we noticed the tile and the grout line broke. And I did notice during the video playback in slow motion that we were able to see this wall flex quite a bit. Um, and we can't conclusively say what broke the tile, but we're assuming it was the wall flex. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But this did not pass the 250 pound test without damaging the wall. Then to show you the back of the system, when we examined the back of the board with the wingets, 
you see that the anchors cut into the board five sixteenths of an inch in slow motion. Again, as I stated before, we also noticed that we were seeing the wall flexing as the weight increased. I'd be very interested in getting feedback from anyone on what implications the breaking of the back of this board has to moisture intrusion. So please comment in the section below. Next, we looked at the two by two tiles with the toggler system, which is here. And as you can see at 142 pounds, we noticed that the anchors pulled through the wall. And obviously we can say that the test didn't meet the 250 pound requirements. And again, both of these anchoring systems, the Winget and the Togglers are widely used. And both of these I have tested in sheetrock and you can see the results on that. To learn more about that, I'll put the links in the description. You can see here that the Toggler, uh, this is quarter 20 thread bolt pulled through the board it caused the tile to separate from the board. And togglers are great anchoring systems and they're rated up to about 1,100 pounds in concrete block. But clearly what happened is, is the sharp edge just punctured the board and then pulled straight through as the pull force came down on it. So as we mentioned earlier, we noticed that the wall was flexing. So we decided to run another test on the gold board just by itself. What we have here is as I was surprised to see that the board flexed up to three eighths of an inch towards the top of the board. So here you can see we're about four inches from the very top where we bolted in up here, maybe five inches. And you can see the gap in the middle and to the right and to the left. But as we ran this test even lower, uh, because we also ran it with the um, toggler bolt as well as the wingets, we noticed there was more flexing coming from the middle. After my testing, I reached out to GoBoard, but I did talk to their technical manager out there, um, trying to ask for written recommendations as to how to fasten grab bars into their system. And when I looked at their all their corporate literature, as well as their YouTube videos, there was nothing at all mentioned about anchoring systems or how to mount grab bars into the GoBoard. So if you have any questions on this, this QR code here is going to take you to the corporate literature side, and this QR code is going to take you to YouTube. But I highly recommend that you just do a search and YouTube under GoBoard and take a look at how many installs are being done out there by a lot of these contractors where there's no blocking put in at all. And we're going to talk about what that actually means. So when I did talk to a go board, one of the things that they said was make sure that you put the grab bar in the studs. Now, these are two bathrooms that I have done. And a very important point, this one here, the tile does not go to the ceiling. And this one, the tile goes all the way up to the ceiling. And just as I mentioned earlier, I do work with foam core backer boards and this this bathroom here was done with Weedy, the Weedy system, and this bathroom here was done with the Schluter system. And as you can see up here, uh, we have a lot of sheetrock area. So it's very easy to take a stud finder here and find the studs, measure down, and then from there you could put in grab bars. But up here, when you have full tile to the ceiling, um, so it's important to note that this was the study that we did, and I'll put a link in the description. But these double lines here are the studs in the wall. And every one of these marks here is where the stud finder went off. And as you can see in the majority of the time, these things are not accurate at all in finding the stud. And as I said, there's a lot of conversations going on on this video. Um, and it's very encouraging um, where they're questioning some of the results. I have reached out to the top 15 manufacturers of stud finders asking for their recommendations on how to find stud with tile. So I encourage you to stay tuned and subscribe. And as we get the feedback back, we'll, we'll give that back to you. But my, my conclusion on this was if your tile is going all the way to the ceiling, uh, your chances of finding the studs aren't all that great. And is it worth the risk of drilling a hole in the wall and missing the stud um, and then ruining your tile and putting a hole in your backer board. So let's talk about what is wood blocking and wood blocking refers to the practice of additional of installing additional wood supports between wall studs like here. 
And this could be done either with half inch plywood on the back wall or this. And I have another link of another video that we've done, and we'll put that in the description below. Uh, just to talk about this, this is the blocking that we did, and this is what it looked like after the Schluter system was put on. And this is not finished yet. I just wanted to get some of these pictures. But in this particular application, this is a friend of ours who has ALS, and we were going to have the occupational therapists come in and recommend where to put the grab bar system. So we wanted to make sure on the back wall, it could go anywhere. And on the front wall here, on the side wall, we put it, you know, where the ADA requirements are. So let's review what our core findings were. Um, number one, there's a lack of manufacturing information on how to install grab bars on the go board, um, foam core backer board. And there is no mention of wood blocking in any of their literature. Second, our on-hands assessment showed that mechanical anchors alone, without the support of wood blocking, often led to the anchors pulling through or damaging the backer board. This issue not only compromised safety of installation, but also highlights a widespread gap in the installation practice. So with the visual evidence, we've documented these failures and we've clearly captured the damage caused by inadequate anchoring methods. These visuals starkly illustrate the risks and underscore the urgency of addressing this issue. Additionally, we observe potential moisture intrusion risks due to the compromised foam backer boards. This not only affects the structural integrity, but also raises health concerns, further emphasizing the need for comprehensive installation standards. Let's talk about some of the future work that we're going to be doing. So additional work needs to be done on other backer board systems. So we're going to be taking a look at a cement core backer board and we're doing work with the permabase. We're looking at the Schluter and we're looking at the Weedy um, systems as well. And one of the things that we're highly recommending is that we get feedback from the community and from our vendors. So this way, as, as we run the additional test and we do the additional work, uh, we're getting input from the community just to see what feedback you guys have. Again, I highly encourage uh, participation in the comments section uh, if you've ever experienced any of this before. So if you're a homeowner that had a bathroom renovation with phone core backer board and never had blocking put in, we'd be interested to hear from you as well as any contractors out there. Uh, manufacture input, anything at all. So again, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as we continue to go through this testing, again, I'm just sharing my observations as I go through this stuff. And again, we'll catch you on the next video. And thank you very much for watching. Take care.